Well, hello again from Cambridge. Welcome back to EPF Stop Marketing and welcome back to SWOT in Action. Well, how are we doing in our S Stop, W Stop, A Stop? T-stop project. We've set brand objectives, S for set objectives, we've weaponized our brand with a strategy, W for weaponize, and we've told targets that our brand is different and special, A for advertise. Now for the last stage of a SWOT program, T for track progress, track progress against the objectives we've set. So let's revisit those objectives. We set two must-have objectives for every brand. Build brand loyalty and build brand asset value. First, and before everything else, loyalty. Of course, the long-term objective has to be absolute loyalty, true loyalty, unwavering loyalty of every one of our brand's targets. 100% brand loyal customers, 100% brand loyal consumers, 100% brand loyal voters, donors, subscribers, colleagues, subordinates, clients, patients, etc., etc. But that isn't going to happen overnight, if ever. Not even Apple can crack that one. But we can get there in stages. We can and will coax individual targets up a ladder through their loyalty space, a ladder which each individual must climb rung by rung alongside our brand on their journey towards absolute loyalty. We can identify at what point on the loyalty ladder our targets have arrived, their position in the loyalty space at a given point of time. We can set objectives for their next port of call, the rungs on the ladder to which we will take them and by when. And we can track the progress of our targets through the loyalty space, how many targets have arrived at each rung. It helps to visualize the loyalty space as a vertical space through which a brand must climb with targeted individuals as they journey together from total separation, when targets are totally ignorant of the brand's very existence, to the union of true brand loyalty. The floor is the low point, the point where the brand is an unknown quantity, where a target is unaware of its existence. Here the brand has no value, no value to the target, and no value for any owner, and of course, zero loyalty. The ceiling is the high point, where the brand has earned loyalty, where brand asset value to the owner is greatest. From floor to ceiling is a ladder, spanning the space. There are many rungs, ten in total. One by one and rung by rung, each target must be coaxed up the ladder in three stages. In the first stage, the target increasingly experiences the brand. In the second stage, experience develops into trust. And in the final stage, trust ascends to loyalty. Time to climb. Bottom rung, I'm unaware of the brand's existence. Rung number two, I've heard of the brand, aware of the name, nothing about it. Could be a can of beans, smartphone, watch, or a car. Rung three, knowledge. I've heard of the brand and know something about it. It's a soft drink, a pair of shoes, mobile phone, a band, an influencer, a person. Rung four, positive brand attitude. More than knowledge, I like what I hear about the brand. I haven't tried it yet, not even the intention to engage actively. That comes next. Five, intention to try the brand. Buy, actively engage. I intend to experience the brand for myself. Of course, we don't always do what we intend to do. Intention isn't action. That is the next rung. Rung six is the big step, the real commitment. I buy the brand. I acquire it. I actively engage. I invest something of myself in it. If I like it, I pass to rung seven, and trust can start to build. Rung seven, satisfaction with the brand. I've used it. I like it, which encourages me to try it again, and I may pass to rung eight. Rung eight, reuse, repurchase, repeat experience, re-engage. Am I as happy as the first time? Not necessarily, but if I am, I will repeat rung eight and move towards rung nine. Sustain satisfaction with the brand. On rung nine, sustained satisfaction, growing and continuously reinforced trust will carry me to the very top of the ladder, the high point of the loyalty space, brand loyalty. Let's look at a real-life example, how one ordinary dad, um, that was me a few years ago, climbed the rungs of the loyalty ladder with Vans shoes. Vans is a well-known and respected brand, but not to this dad until the teenage daughter says she wants new shoes. And that's the starting point. Let's call it the floor. The target, the ignorant father, has no brand awareness at all. He wants to buy his daughter a pair of shoes. Any shoes will do. I'm on rung one. 
When the daughter says it has to be Vans, or I leave home, I love them, best shoes on the planet, I become aware of the brand's existence. Rung two on the ladder, brand awareness. But all Dad knows is a brand name for some shoes, nothing else about them, Vans shoes. I do a bit of research. Vans were California skateboard shoes originally, now made in India and China. What isn't? So I climb onto the brand knowledge rung. I'm on rung number three. I look at Vans advertising. Ask other parents. They seem to be good quality, well made, durable, stylish, cool. I'm developing a positive brand attitude. I'm on rung four. Okay, I'm convinced. I will buy them for my princess, who of course deserves only the best. Purchase intention, rung five. And in due course, I take out a mortgage and buy our first vans. Real purchase, active engagement, rung six. They are good. They look good on her feet. They're tough, clearly well made, deliver what they say on the tin. We are satisfied. We're on the satisfaction rung, rung seven. We buy another pair, repeat purchase, rung eight. They're good too, and the next pair, and the next. Sustain satisfaction. Rung nine. And so we develop into loyal targets of brand vans. My wife now has several vans golf shoes. The daughter loves vans. The wife loves vans. I love vans. We will undoubtedly buy them again. We are loyal. Okay, back to tracking and objectives. How do we set loyalty objectives, and how do we track the progress of targets and the brand through the loyalty space and up the ladder towards absolute brand loyalty? If you have one target, that's easy. Where is he or she on the ladder at a given point in time? Set the objective of climbing a rung or two, and by when, and check back to monitor progress. So if I'm the Vans brand manager, this old dude is my sole consumer, and he's on run six, he's just bought the first pair of Vans trainers, I might set the objective of taking him to run eight, repeat purchase, within six months. Simples. If you have many targets, the work is harder, but it is still just a matter of putting each target on their rung and setting the objective of coaxing them all up two rungs within six months or a year or whatever makes sense. In both cases, one target or 1,000, you will check at a later stage to see how each individual or group is progressing, how many targets on each rung. Of course, you might want a single figure, or the boss might. Something easy to grasp. Bosses like easy to grasp. Try a total target loyalty quotient. That's not too complicated. You can award loyalty points to each target on each rung. Say one loyalty point per individual on rung one, the floor, two points on rung two, three on rung three, and so on, up to ten points on rung ten, the loyalty. Add them all up and express the total as a percentage of the full loyalty potential, which is total targets in your sample times 10. That's all just a suggestion. It's over to you. If you want to open a debate on loyalty, just send me an email. But the loyalty quotient could become really useful when we come to tracking brand asset value and particularly brand cash value. We will need to know how many loyal targets we have and how loyal they are. Let's look at that as the final step in using SWOT to track progress. Join me in SWOT Track Progress Part 2, Brand Asset Value.